the city Said a young man sitting next to me Heard you new in town before you get around Here's a little tip from me Best it to yourself no matter where you go Just watch your back and hold your own And if after that trouble's knocking at your door Remember my friend, it's a town we're fighting for Welcome to your paradise With a little man, pays a bigger price Take another hit, just get it over with We're a little sick, you see Can't stay down on all we gotta make it known So get back up, you're not alone And then hit him back to the floor We never had a choice They're knocking at your door Remember my friend It's time in this Fellow mech warriors, mage leader here, and welcome to the Inner Sphere, where the women are sexy and have about a 60 to 75 percent chance of wanting to murder you. This place has been tearing itself apart with near constant warfare for the past five motherfucking centuries, and nobody seems to be planning on stopping anytime soon. And what are the weapons they've been using to commit war crimes for half a millennium? Battle mechs, giant robots armed to the teeth that stomp around with all the refined grace of a walrus in the Sahara. A lot of people will want to compare these things to Gundam, but I like to think of them as moronic mobile suits, because these things are not super weapons. Think of them less like hyperspace ninjas with massive lightsabers, and more like a T-72 on legs. They're big, but not stupidly big, most of the time, and they're armed with weapons that you would expect to find on a futuristic battlefield. No one's pulling a giant laser cannon off of the spaceship and one-shotting anything and everything around. You've got a gun, some basic lasers, and a bunch of armor. Figure the rest of it out for yourself. And when it comes to video games, the best one for really capturing the raw grit and power of a battle mech is MechWarrior 3, a game that came out when I was little more than a stain on my dad's pant leg. But since that game doesn't have four-player co-op, I won't be talking about that one today. Nope, instead I'll be playing the pale imitation of a MechWarrior game known as MechWarrior 5 a game by a company called Piranha that's about as good at making functional products as I am at social interaction. That is to say, fucking awful. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, MechWarrior 5 isn't great. Even with two DLCs and a third on the way, this game has been plagued from the word go by crappy UI, terrible mission design, bugs, and various other design decisions that make me scratch my head. But luckily for us, there's a saving grace in this game. Well, two of them actually. Co-op and mods. Four-player co-op is one of the greatest gifts the gods have ever granted us mere mortals, because the simple act of playing through something with a bunch of your buddies can take any game from bad to god tier in a matter of minutes. And mods can take basically anything you don't like about a game and replace it with something you do like. Unless you play on console, in which case... <laughs> so today I'm going to give you a basic rundown on how to get the most fun out of MechWarrior 5 so that you can enjoy this game in spite of Piranha's best efforts. I can I'm never sorry. get I can never get past how the catapult in this game looks like it's wearing a little fedora when you look at it from the right angle. I'm not looking for that because I'll never be able to unsee it. That there is funny. <laughs> Milady Arano. I've mentioned the need for co-op and mods already, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. There are a lot of mods for MechWarrior 5, and you're free to experiment with them at your leisure until you find that combination that perfectly suits your every need, but I'm going to give you the rundown on the ones that I consider to be the best starting point. Now first up is the Tonnage Limit Remover, get this mod. For some godforsaken reason, Piranha thought the best way to balance this game would be to place a limit on what you could and couldn't bring into a mission. Most of the time it isn't all that bad, but... Frequently enough, there will be a mission where you can only bring in a couple light mechs with you and you run face first into a wall of pain as you get swarmed by heavier stuff. 
It's time to give him the docket. Oh, we got artillery. Yeah, about 20 minutes. We're gonna have oh, to go. God. Oh, that's a lot of artillery. That's a lot. Alright, I'm going artillery. for the arty on the right here. Yep. I'm going to the arty on the right. Okay. Uh, split up, take out the artillery. If you can't get away from the artillery, if you have jump jets, use them. With the, uh... Eat Daka! They seem to be only focusing on you there, mage. Yeah. No, my leg is nearly cracked. Center torso got breached. Get out of there. Yeah, those ACTs just went bye-bye. Oh my god, you like a swarm of VTOLs. My god, what is this mission? Every once in a while, the RNG just completely fucks you in this game. Like, oh my god, I'm just getting cored here. I lost I got a problem with my cannon. Alright, I'm bailing. Also, don't worry if words like tonnage and light mechs don't mean anything to you. I'll explain them in a minute. The tonnage limit remover lets you bring whatever you want, whenever you want, which makes it about 7,000% better. It's essential to making this game fun. Next up, TT Rules AI Mod. The default AI in MechWarrior 5 is straight up broken, and enemies and allies are absolutely brain dead. This mod doesn't fix everything, but it does at least make them somewhat functional. Next up is a trilogy of mods all made under the same umbrella, the Yet Another series. Yet Another Weapon, Yet Another Weapon Clan, and Yet Another Mech Lab are all express tickets to Fun Town. These add a bunch of new weapons into the game, as well as giving you more control over your loadouts. And again, don't worry, I'll explain more about the Mech Lab in a minute. Just make sure you enable the Yet Anothers on a fresh save, or else you're going to be spending a lot of time hunting across the Inner Sphere in search of engines because your mechs don't work anymore. Beyond these, there are a metric fuck ton of cosmetic mods that improve little things about the game and tweak it to your tastes. I'm running with a mod that makes my HUD look less shitty, as well as one that replaces the absolute ass tier soundtrack with an angelic fan created remixes of classic Mech Warrior tunes from older games, which makes the game feel that much better to play because you're going from this. to this. Just don't go overboard with the mods, because while some of them are client-side, so you, only you have to have it, Others will need to be installed for everyone in your party. When me and the boys started playing this game, we had to spend about two hours straight installing, uninstalling, and fiddling around with our mods just to get everyone to load into the mission together. Guys, I got a problem. Not a problem. I can't believe the, it must be the compass that did it. It can't be the compass. We all have it. Uh, I'm doing nothing. It's, I'm stuck in a. I'm stuck again. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Damn you, piranha. Alright. Well, looks like we're doing this again. Yep. The general rule of thumb is to have everyone run the same mod list just to be safe. But if you manage to get the game going after all of that, you can look forward to a load of good times with your buddies. Are you having Come fun here. brawling? Come here. I'm gonna punch you. You're gonna like it. There he goes. Okay. I didn't mean to shoot you in the back there, buddy. Oh, sure. That's what they all say. Not Come you, here. but Come Shadowhawk here. right next to you. Oh. Jesus Christ, those LRMs. Uh, Ow. You don't need to be alive. That's what they call danger close. <laughs> danger close! Oh my god. Oh my god. <sighs> my life flashed in front of my eyes. Okay, yes. we're good. This farming institution that we're protecting, we're protecting so well by stamping on everything. Oh, we're not here to protect it. We're just here to fight the enemy. Looks like there was a swimming pool here at one point. <laughs> now it's a uh, cooling position. Now it's a hole. <laughs> it's a slight depression in the earth. Ooh, a griffin! Griffin! Yeah, I know if you don't take it, Frank will when he plays. 
if he wants to play too. Oh, hell yeah. Let's get Frank in on this. Yeah. I mean, I am in my favorite mech of all time, so. Hey, Griffin. Let's get this fucking Griffin. Get the Griffin. Motherfucker. Get the Griffin. Oh, yeah. That's a one end. You won't like me when I get into close range with you, bitch. Nice shot. My missile's getting anywhere close to that thing. Come uh, here, boy. Yes. No. They are not. <laughs> He's coming your way, though. Okay, I'm gonna get closer. I would like for you to get out of the sky and be on the ground dead. Shit. Excuse me, excuse me, you there, please, Woo! come here. You're in my way. I don't like you. Die, you bastard. Yeah! Oh, I don't know who killed it. I don't much care. I've got I, think, I, think, I think you got it. It looked like it died with the missiles. Really so I'm going to give you a brief overview of the game itself. If you haven't ever seen a MechWarrior game before in your life, then this section is for you. MechWarrior is part of a larger franchise known as Battletech, a tabletop war game from the 1980s, kind of like Warhammer 40k, but without the need to sell your soul to Lucifer to be able to afford a starter box. In MechWarrior 5's campaign, you play as Commander Mason, the leader of a mercenary company who takes over after the death of his father. It's 3015, and everyone's still shooting the shit out of each other, so you take on contracts for all the different great houses in order to become the biggest and baddest merc unit around, all while trying to solve a great big mystery about your father's shady past. Or you do what the rest of us do and ignore the campaign altogether. The story of MechWarrior 5 is about as dull and generic as things can get. The real default mode of this game is career mode, which sadly does require the first DLC to be able to play, but it makes the game way better. In career mode, you don't have to fiddle with the unskippable tutorial or those crappy opening missions. You get plopped down into a region of the Inner Sphere and go straight to work. You've got a bunch of places to choose from, each one offering different starting units. There's a Free Worlds League run by House Merrick, which is basically the United States if the Civil War kept flaring back up every few decades or so. So, more or less like the US now. There's the Capellan Confederation, run by House Liao, who are basically the Romulans from Star Trek, or if you aren't a massive geek like I am, are basically the Chai Coms of Battletech. They're secretly behind everything bad that's ever happened, and they're known for backstabbing anyone and everyone to get ahead. There's the Federated Sons, run by House Davian, and they're basically the Goody Two-Shoes faction that is super reliable, but also super bland and boring. The Lyran Commonwealth is run by House Steiner and are a bunch of wacky space Germans who are fantastic at trade and god-awful at military strategy, but usually have enough money to stomp enemies into the dirt with sheer numbers. The Draconis Combine is the Weeb faction, run by House Kirita, and they're what happens when you forget to nuke a country the third time and let them go into space. Samurai, Ninjas, Bushido Code, Anime, and Traps are the name of the game. Oh, and heinous war crimes that make Man King look like a polite afternoon chat. Finally, there's the best faction in the game, the Free Rasselhog Republic, a section of space that used to be under House Kirita until they got tired of everyone fighting in their backyard and kicked everyone out, along with the help of some friendly space wizards. Long story. The fiercely independent freedom fighters and underdogs will definitely not be written out of the lore and then become the bottom bitches of an incredibly lame faction that shits on everything they stand for. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which faction you choose is really down to personal taste, since the mechs they give you to start with are all terrible, and you can increase your standing with anyone at any time. Just know that if you spend two decades killing fed rats, they probably aren't going to want to pay you as much if you decide to work for them instead. But once you've picked a faction, it's time to go to work. Red zones on the star map are conflict zones, which is where the missions are. Stars connected with lines are industrial hubs where you can buy weapons and new mechs for better prices. You can also repair your mechs there for less money, but keep in mind that every jump costs sea bills, so make sure you aren't wasting it by jumping too far. Weigh the jump cost against your local added repair cost, and choose whichever one is cheaper. When you pick a mission, you'll then get to negotiate with the faction that hired you. You'll have a number of points to use, and the better a faction likes you, the more points you'll have. You can use these points to get a bigger payout, have your damages covered, get some air support, or increase the amount of salvage you get at the end. I recommend putting points into payout and salvage because that's where you get the money. There are several different mission types. Demolitions contracts drop you onto a map with a base to destroy. 
Defense drops you onto a map with a base that you want to keep from getting destroyed. Warzone has you fighting off waves of enemies until you get tired of it, and are a great way to earn extra sea bills if you can go the distance. Assassination has one or more specific enemy targets that you have to kill. Raid is like Demolition, but instead of a single base you destroy specific structures littered across the map, and Beachhead Contracts have you completing a set of objectives as they're given to you, with the option of taking out radar dishes so that friendly reinforcements can land to help you out. Early on, your first priority should be getting better mechs, because the starting machines are garbage. You can also start by going to the nearest industrial hub and sell your four crap machines and use the money to buy two or three decent ones. So let me quickly give you the basics on these things. If you've played World of Tanks, then you should feel right at home here. Light mechs are scouts and harassers. They don't have a lot of armor or firepower and rely on their speed to survive. They can be some of the most fun to play, but are an absolute nightmare for the AI to pilot because they charge blindly into enemy fire and get themselves shredded. I swear the AI has all the self-preservation instinct of a millennial drive through worker. The medium mechs are a step up, giving you a little more power and protection at the cost of some of your speed. These things are the bread and butter of most forces, and you'll be seeing a lot of them. Heavy mechs are generally slower and tankier with even bigger guns, while assault mechs are the closest thing to God on Earth that a machine can grant you. These things are your ultimate goal, because while a real military will try to vary their forces to give themselves a tactical edge, in MechWarrior 5 you're almost always going to be heavily outnumbered by things that are just as big as you are, so you're going to need something that can stand up to the firepower. Now, none of this is absolute. Think of it as a general guideline for buying mechs so that you don't buy something you don't need or pass up something that you do. Take a look at the tonnage numbers besides the mech and get the big ones when you can afford them. There's more to the mechs than just their size. Every machine is fully customizable as long as you're using the mods I mentioned earlier. You can swap out engines for faster or lighter versions, add or subtract armor, and strap all kinds of crazy weapon combinations onto your machines where your only limitation is your hard points, which determine how many of each kind of weapon you can equip, and the maximum tonnage, which determines how big the weapons you strap to it can be. Ballistic weapons are guns, cannons, gauss rifles, and even artillery pieces if you're batshit insane. Energy weapons are for things like lasers and weaponized particle accelerators, and missiles are... well, missiles. This is where the game gets really fun. Sure, you can min-max the shit out of your mechs until you have the perfect machine for your needs, or you can strap a gigantic engine onto the slowest mech in the game and watch it break the sound barrier. The choice is completely up to you. Once you've done a bunch of missions and built up some solid reputation with a faction or two, you'll be practically swimming in sea bills and you can become a new Avalon mad scientist by scrambling around every planet, snatching up the best gear, and making the wackiest shit in the galaxy just to see what it does. Your buddies can customize their mechs as well, and believe me, nothing is more fun than seeing what kind of nonsense your pals dream up while they're high on Canopian battle powder. Once you're actually in the game, things are fairly simple. Just keep in mind that you're not controlling a person, you're controlling an armored combat vehicle. The controls might feel like a first-person shooter, but don't be fooled. These are tank controls. Your keyboard controls your legs, and your mouse controls your torso. This might take a little getting used to if you've never played a game like this before, but again, if you've played World of Tanks or War Thunder, then you should feel right at home. Just try and focus on where your legs are pointed, and you'll do just fine. Your weapons are each put into a firing group, so pushing a button will fire every weapon in that group at once, so you can customize how many buttons fire how many things. You can shoot everything with a single mouse click if you want, or you can have a different button for every single thing. I don't recommend doing either of those things, but that doesn't mean you won't try it anyway. Just be careful about shooting everything at once. Every weapon generates heat, which is measured by this handy little gauge here. The more you shoot, the higher it goes, and the more heat sinks you have equipped, the quicker it depletes. Keep the number low if you want to live. If you overheat, your mech will shut down, leaving you exposed to enemy fire for several seconds while your machine cools down. You can override this shutdown, of course, but doing that makes you run the risk of outright exploding, so only do it in extreme emergencies. Your health is split between the different parts of your machine, and all of them are protected by armor. Once your armor is gone, you start to take internal damage, and that's when things get hairy. You can lose weapons, a whole limb, or even die outright. Keep your center torso and head protected, because losing either one is instant death. But also, aim for those spots on your enemies, because their damage works the same way that yours does. Also, the more damage you take, the more expensive your repair costs will be, so make sure you aren't taking more hits than you need to. Also, if you see any big blue glowing crates sitting around, pick them up. 
because they're either a mission objective, or more commonly, a chunk of sea bills or a weapon that you can keep for yourself. All of these things can raise your fun levels with this game dramatically, but like I said before, the best way to make a game fun is to play it with friends. I've played MechWarrior 5 in single player for a long time, but nothing even comes close to the amount of fun I have when Oswald is destroying my eardrums with random shrieks of terror. I want to give a huge shout out to my patrons Spacer and Arcos Raid, as well as Admiral Chirino, who joined me on the Discord server to get this footage. And if it seems like we were having fun, then you ain't seen nothing yet, because I only started recording halfway through, and most of the really cool shit happened without me getting it saved on my hard drive. If you're worried about finding other people to play with, then there are tons of different communities online to play this game. But you can also join my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month and get access to the Discord server. There's no special admin privileges or anything for people who pay more, it's just a way for me to keep the lights on and for you guys to hang out and have some fun. Links in the description. But yeah, that's about all I have to say. Hope you found this little beginner's guide helpful, and if this world of giant robots interests you, then check out Black Pants Legion here on YouTube. Tex makes a series of kick-ass videos on Battletech that'll knock your socks off, so go check him out if you haven't already. And until next time, this is Mage Leader, signing off.